So thank you for joining us. This is Jody Tropiano, the Content Director for Health, and I'm lucky to be here with Namesh Javari, who is the SVP at McKesson and President of Healthmark Pharmacy. Namesh, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks, Jody. Ha thanks for having me. Hope you are safe and healthy. Thank you, you too. I am safe and healthy, and uh, knock on wood, it's, it stays that way. Absolutely. So um, first, we'd love to just kind of get into your overall thoughts on the pandemic at large. What have you been seeing? What have been the biggest challenges, biggest successes so far from both the McKesson and just a general health standpoint? No, thank you, Jody. First of all, thank you very, very much. Uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to share a little bit about my perspective and, and McKesson and HealthMart's perspective on what's going on. Certainly the pandemic and the public health crisis that we have is uh, uh, putting a lot of pressure on, on, on all areas of the economy, all areas of, of uh, the healthcare system, as well as uh, just people in general. And, and uh, I can tell you that some of the challenges that we're seeing from this is probably the changing guidelines. Um, you know, uh, every day there's another message that comes down from the federal government or from uh, the bodies uh, that govern practice of pharmacy or practice of healthcare, and and so it becomes confusing. It's uh, hard to stay consistent with what we're trying to do. Uh, hard to provide the right direction at times. So those are some of the challenges uh, that you see in this type of situation. But let's let's uh, let's not be uh, uh, coy about this. There's a lot of successes. Um, you know uh, whether it's pharmacists stepping up, uh, whether it's our frontline workers stepping up uh, and doing what they do best, which is take care of patients. Um, uh, we're, from a McKesson standpoint, doing everything possible to support our pharmacies. Uh, we're providing them webinars on uh, understanding what this COVID-19 pandemic is, what they can do to protect themselves, protect their patients. Uh, we have uh, uh, signage, uh, new supplies, uh, we've even provided uh, many of our stores uh, plexiglass barriers uh, at the cash register or at the consultation window or at the counter uh, to provide them some protection, uh, as well as, of course, uh, providing them with the necessary um, PPE that's uh, needed for them to do their job. Uh, and, uh, you know, tomorrow we'll be uh, certainly uh, announcing that uh, we'll have uh, COVID testing specimen collection in many of our stores nationwide. Uh, and we're proud to work with HHS and, and uh, uh, our partner eTrue North uh, to provide the right tes uh, testing capabilities and the right uh, specimen collection capabilities in these communities. Uh, so there's a lot of challenges in these types of situations, but I can tell you that uh, if you don't, need, you don't need to look hard, there's a lot of successes and a lot of folks that are going beyond what they do every day uh, for, for this type of situation to take care of their patients. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so we're seeing some incredible work. That's incredible. Congratulations on the, the testing sites. That's, that's a big advancement. So you mentioned working with HHS on that. In general, how has it been working with both the federal and state level governments to kind of push stuff like that through? And then also overall, how do you feel the response has been both at the state and federal level? Well, I'm so glad you asked that question. You know, uh, because advocating for not only the profession of pharmacy, uh, but advocating ultimately for the communities is the most critical thing right now. And working with HHS has been absolutely tremendous. Uh, their teams have been engaged. Uh, they've been agile. They've been quick to react. And, and uh, we have been working hand in hand with them on whether it's uh, helping them understand what's going on in the communities, uh, as well as uh, helping them understand what we can do to help, uh, how pharmacists and pharmacies in the communities can help. Uh, uh, as you know, and most people know, the pharmacist is the most successful healthcare professional in the, in the U.S. Uh, you know, there is no appointment necessary. There is no um, uh, long line to get in or anything like that. Uh, these folks are available and they can truly help. So we've been working very closely with HHS, whether it's on the COVID testing, uh, whether it's providing insight uh, when they do their market research on what's going on in the communities, um, as well as uh, at the McKesson level, as you know, we have been involved in uh, Project Airbridge, which is 
uh, helping to bring supplies, needed supplies, PPEs from overseas. Uh, so then we, it can be distributed to the appropriate institutions uh, in the US. Um, so it's been absolutely fantastic to work with them. And, and I think they're also realizing uh, that a prob private public partnership is what's going to get it done. Um, now, the other areas that we've also been working on are other trade organizations, whether it's the National Association of Chain Drug Stores uh, that has taken um, uh, a lot of steps to ensure that uh, policies in place to allow pharmacies uh, to truly practice at the top of their license. Um, personally, uh, we have been involved in ensuring that we can educate uh, both at the state level, at the federal level, uh, at the Board of Pharmacy level. Um, and so anything that we can do to help in, give them insight, educate them, uh, is what we've been doing. So I've been very, uh, quite honestly, I've been very, very pleased. That's wonderful. And so how has McKesson really been impacted most by the crisis? And, and maybe you can get down to a pharmacy level, just overall how pharmacies have been impacted. But then also, what is their place in um, you know, the solution? Why are pharmacies so important? And why has McKesson been so crucial in the various solutions that we do have? Yeah, great question. You know, so McKesson, as, as most people know, uh, we touch every aspect of healthcare in the U.S., whether it's from our wholesale and distribution and our supply chain all the way to the provider level, whether it's on the pharmacy side or it's on the U.S. oncology side, our U.S. biologics uh, of, uh, to provide specialty medications. So we're touching healthcare on every aspect, whether it's our partners in the pharmacy or in our health systems or in our providers. Uh, and so we are really right now uh, very central in trying to help be a solution for what's going on in our country and quite honestly in the entire world. Um, uh, so everything from securing additional product when av where available, um, sourcing backup products, uh, allocating the right uh, 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 products, supplies, equipment uh, to the uh, appropriate institutions, uh, and then, of course, uh, internally, uh, we've been instituting and initiating business continuity uh, action planning, um, again, to maintain that supply chain. I think what happens is, you know, it, it, it's really easy to forget about the importance of the distribution in the supply chain, right? Because when things just show up, nobody ever cares, right? Things show up. It's when things become very tight, like what's happening now, that folks on the front lines and the wholesale distribution of the supply chain become extremely important. And so uh, McKesson has been doing an unbelievable job to ensure that all of our distribution centers are staffed with absolutely committed people, uh, committed team members, uh, doing everything that they can to show up and ensure that it's not just a product, as we say, it is a patient at the end of the product. And so, uh, uh, you know, we've been right in the middle of all of this and, and we're happy to do it. And, and quite honestly, we're, we're honored to be in that position. That's great. And so where do we go from here? You mentioned the supply chain. And I imagine, you know, in the initial phases, you were shoring up your supply chains, shoring up testing capabilities so that you are able to roll out testing like you are. So what is your focus going forward? What does the next phase look like for you guys? Well, I'll give you a couple of different angles to that, right? So the first phase, uh, where do we go from here, uh, is ensuring that our team members are safe, uh, they're healthy, they're able to do uh, their job. So ultimately, folks in the front lines of healthcare, whether it's physicians, whether it's nurses, whether it's pharmacists, uh, whether it's respiratory therapists, all of those folks can do their job. And so what we are discussing and what we're going through is how do we phase in approach to ensure that we can operate in this new normal, this new balance. Uh, so we're working on, on uh, ensuring that we have the right planning for that as well. I think uh, going forward from a uh, more uh, outside of our four walls perspective, it's ensuring that we have the right procedures in place uh, that God forbid something like this happens again that we're even more prepared uh, to help the government, help our communities, uh, help the pharmacies, help the physicians, nurses, all of those folks uh, 
um, uh, so we can be prepared. I do think that uh, we haven't seen what the um, long-term impact of this situation is uh, for, for communities. Um, we do believe that vaccinations are going to play a large part uh, going forward, whether it's in uh, childhood vaccinations or whether it's in adult vaccinations, um, making sure that folks have access and can get their flu shot this year. Uh, and when a vaccine is available for COVID-19, that um, uh, certainly we can help to ensure that we can get that vaccine to the right folks. At the same time, folks like our pharmacists can then start to administer them. And so it's, it's, it's really uh, looking at all of those angles, uh, not simply taking care of what's in front of us today, but really uh, what the trickle effect is going to be going forward. Uh, and we believe that vaccinations are going to be a big part of that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And so you mentioned preparing for, you know, if something like this were to happen again, making sure we're prepared. So going back to the current crisis, maybe we weren't as prepared as we hoped we would be. What weaknesses within the health system do you think the crisis really put in the spotlight in areas where we weren't as prepared and could improve upon for next time? Yeah, I think, I think the entire healthcare system, as well as both private and public sectors, have learned a lot. Um, and I think the biggest thing that we've learned is we are stronger together than alone. Uh, so whether it's our hospitals and our health systems uh, relying on the retail pharmacies or the retail pharmacies relying on, on uh, the, the, uh, the physician providers in the community, whatever the case is, I think the one thing that we can all take away from this is how do we start to bring the healthcare system together? Uh, and how do we start to allow practitioners, name the practitioner, a doc, a nurse, a pharmacist, and so on and so forth, but allowing them to truly practice at the top of their license. Let me give you a great example. Um, on April 8th, HHS announced uh, to allow pharmacists uh, to begin COVID-19 testing uh, and ordering at the same time to try to bring more access to testing to the communities. This was historic for the profession, right? I hadn't seen this in over 20 years. Uh, the last time something like this happened where they unilaterally opened up the scope of practice for pharmacists um, was back in 2006 when they allowed pharmacists to start vaccinating and, and, and giving vaccines um, uh, in a community. Uh, and that changed how uh, the access and the affordability of vaccines uh, uh, became in, in the U.S. So I think things like this uh, are, are things that the government uh, is realizing that sometimes the biggest barrier to us providing care is sometimes us. And so how do we get, of our, get out of our own way uh, and start to free up these practitioners that have gone to school, are trained, and that can truly, truly take care of uh, the communities at large. Great, I agree. And how else do you think the health system has fundamentally changed because of this crisis, whether for better or for worse? I think I think uh, you know. The, you remember the concept uh, that certainly uh, we've all talked about is how do we bring healthcare to patients and to people rather than having them come to healthcare, right? So the concept being, we should make healthcare accessible when they want it, where they want it, how they want it. They being the patient, and so I think one of the fundamental change that you're going to see is is it's not going to be simply uh, a brick and mortar. It is going to be truly omnichannel approach. How do we leverage telemedicine? How do we leverage digital and mobile and then combine it with the physical presence of a practitioner? Um, I think that's going to be mainstay. Uh, the ease of access, whether it's delivery of med medications, delivery of products, uh, curbside delivery, curbside uh, access uh, to, to products and prescriptions and care, I think will be a big deal. And certainly, as I mentioned, telehealth uh, uh, has, has become a, a core fundamental in the healthcare system. I think before that, uh, telehealth was looked at as a, a convenience. Um, and, and I think now it's a, a fundamental necessity. And so I think those are some of the things that I believe 
the health, sim health system in its large um, uh, ecosystem will completely shift in, in this omni-channel approach. Mm -hmm. And telehealth is a great example of this, but how else do you think that digital health's position within the health ecosystem has really been strengthened from this and how at McKesson are you leveraging digital a bit more now? Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I think, I think we're seeing providers transition to telehealth or digital uh, uh, tools overnight. I'll give you a great example. My wife's a provider. She's a, uh, an NP in, in private practice here in Illinois. And, um, you know, she uh, went completely to uh, telehealth and or digital means of communicating uh, with her patients. Uh, and and it, it was an amazing sight to see because she had never done that before. Uh, but she was communicating with, with patients all throughout the day and uh, without having to see them in person, per se, they're seeing them on the screen and, and were able to take care of them. So I, I think, I think it, uh, it, it, telehealth is a component, um, but the concept of digital um, services, uh, whether it's as easy as ordering your prescription refill online or through your mobile uh, application, uh, or being able to access your uh, immunization records for whatever that's worth at this current time. All of those types of things, you know, it, it's no longer about going and walking into a, a practice or a pharmacy only. It is about being able to access all of that information, um, you know, on your mobile device. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, uh, you know, when you're sick, uh, yeah, you know, the, de the delivery person can't help you, right? Um, uh, you, you need to have access to something and whether it's that, uh, that's uh, through your, your mobile application or through your website or through the phone, um, whatever the case is. So uh, that's where I think this whole thing is going to go uh, quickly. I think you're also going to see providers uh, be more flexible uh, with patients. Uh, I think they're going to give them the ability to say, hey, I don't have an in-person visit for you in the next X number of days, but I can see you digitally mm -hmm. or I can see you through telehealth. So I think, you know, we have been all talking about the consumerization of healthcare, right? Where consumers are in control. I think the biggest thing that's going to happen, uh, I certainly hope so, is that consumers are truly going to be in charge and they are truly going to say, hey, you know, I want my healthcare this way um, and I will uh, go to a provider and a pharmacy that will do that for me. Mm -hmm. I hope so. And so what will be the rest of your focus for 2020 and then moving into 2021? Yeah, I think, I, uh, you know, our focus will be truly bringing a balanced omni-channel approach uh, uh, to uh, pharmacy care. Uh, advocating for community pharmacy is going to be a big deal. Uh, you know, making sure that we work hand in hand with government agencies, both at the federal level as well as the state level, to help them understand what else we can do. Um, and really leading our operational teams uh, to make sure that we can execute all of this. Uh, you know, ideas are wonderful, uh, but they're only wonderful if you can actually execute them. And, and so it's, it'll be important that uh, uh, whatever comes our way over the next six months, eight months, nine months, uh, throughout this year, uh, it'll be important that uh, we can execute uh, flawlessly, not only for, uh, for uh, uh, patients coming in, but certainly for the healthcare system to see an example that we can re all rely upon uh, for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, re I remember at Health 2019, you said, we, we have enough think tanks, we need do tanks. That, that definitely stuck with me. Well, thank you. Thanks for remembering that. I, 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 I firmly believe in that. I, I do, you know, uh, there's so much that we can do today that we don't have to wait for the future, right? And, and uh, you know, good patient care uh, with the technology that we have, with the practitioners that we have, with the tools that we have, we can do a lot today. And, and that's truly what I meant when I said that in October of of last year at the health conference, and I'll certainly say that again today, which is uh, we have to go do things that make sense for patient care. Mm -hmm. Any other last thoughts or just future projections 
around this pandemic and um, you know, maybe where you think we'll be at the other side of this when we finally get there? Well, Jody, first of all, thank you again. Uh, this has been a great opportunity. Uh, I, I think uh, what you all do with the health conference and, and the focus that you put on healthcare and, and innovation is just absolutely fantastic. And so, first of all, I wanna say thank you. Um, Appreciate I, it. You bet. Uh, I think there's a lot that we can all learn uh, going forward. Um, uh, you know, the future is, is to a certain extent unknown. Um, but I certainly hope that we can all walk away and say, uh, there's changes that we can all make to how we live. Uh, there's changes that we can all make to how we treat each other. Um, and there's certainly changes that we can make to the healthcare system. Uh, and I certainly hope that if we can do just a little bit of all of that, that we'll be a better society in the future. Um, so uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'm pretty positive person. I think we're going to be able to do that. I like that. And thank you so much again for joining us. I love that your health flag with your caricature, I can see a glimpse of it in the corner in your background. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I have it hung up, uh, you know, my, uh, my uh, kids make fun of me a little bit uh, and say, dad, uh, you got a nice cartoon up there. I said, well, that's, I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> I like seeing that, that's great. Well, thank you again, Namesh. Best of luck to you and to McKesson and thank you for, for sharing this with us today. Uh, thanks, Jody. I really appreciate it and, and hope you and your team uh, stay safe and stay healthy and, and let us know if we can do anything for you. Appreciate that. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching this interview. We're doing our best to keep our health community up to date and informed as the pandemic progresses. So please check back for more interviews and blog pieces with leading health experts, as well as check out our health COVID resource page for more information. Thanks again.